Okay, so I'm going to just go give you an auto overview of automobile manufacturing industry of any particular company. So this is just going to be an infographic, and I'm just going to give you a overview of the whole uh, process. So how how does a manufacturing begin, and how is the output car received? So we're just going to go through. Or step by step. So, in any automotive company, what you would see first is that they are purchasing steel. So, maybe from any company like Tata Steel or Jindal Steels, they buy the steel, big steel rolls. They have it stamped in this, and the sheets are passed on to conveyor uh, into the stamping building. So, in any, if you go to any automotive plant, maybe Maruti, Hyundai, Renault, or uh, Toyota, or any automotive plant, you will see a big building called as stamping. So first, what they have, they will have stamping dies, fixtures, etc. So the, the the stamped sheets will go in, and there will be this big stamps, uh, stamping dies, which will stamp it into the required shape of a door. For example, as you see here, at this stage, this is totally electronically controlled and totally comp managed computerized in a computerized manner. And once the stamping is done, you will get the required shape, but with sharp edges. At this stage, you you will roll out the sharp edges, and it, this process is called hemming of edges. Again, there will be like minor punching of holes, etc., whatever is required, and that activity is done here. And once the smooth, uh, once the edge the edges are smooth, and the st uh, steel sheets are converted to the required uh, steel uh, shapes. Okay, for say for example the door or uh, or whatever of the of the car at this stage this um, th th this is uh, uh, for, from here there will be a quality control check and this is the end of the stamping line so this is this entire activity is called stamping and you will see a separate building for this in any automotive plant from the stamping plant all those stamped different components maybe doors hood etc everything goes into a different line this line is called the body in white line. So in this line, they will take up those st uh, stamped uh, parts and they will have robotic welding without human intervention. So there are huge robots which cannot be moved around that easily. So they are fixed in uh, at places and they have defined programs to operate this. And once these uh, um, uh, parts are available, they are welded together to arrive at from, uh, welded together using robot. So some parts are still not welded ro robotically, like some co complex parts which you cannot be reached or something. And then they they are uh, there are semi-automated welding with handheld weld guns for smaller parts. So once the left and right side of, of the car are assembled, then it goes to the root placement. And again, it uh, a robotic welding happens, and the roof is also welded together. At this stage, this is called a body in white. This this entire um, uh, shell of the car is called the body in white. And here again, you will have quality control. So there will be a uh, a chamber with uh, tube lights all around, and people will be employed to check the quality of the whole um, body. And if it is successful, it will move further, or it will be rejected at this. Uh, the the body will be rejected at this stage itself. From here further, it moves into what is called as a paint paint shop. So this this whole part is called the body shop. So you have covered the stamping shop, the body shop, and now it goes to the paint shop. In the paint shop, first it 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 is continuously di dipped through three different tankers. You like it could be different also in different uh, new processes are also available. But basically, degreasing degreasing will remove all the dirt or anything or any other uh, like welding uh, residue or that was there on the car. So degreasing. Then there is a primer application. Then an electrolyte dip dipping also happens so that uh, this helps for your anti-corrosion coating. After all these three dips, it goes to the anti-corrosion coating. So this is a uh, coating done to prevent it from corroding or like from rusting. And then it moves towards the paint shop. So you have robotic as well as manual spray painting that happens on the car, a car body. And after this, it, it goes into the dryer or uh, with your infrared lamps. So at this stage, it is dried and the car uh, car comes out of the paint shop. So in this, the next light tunnel, the paint quality is also checked and otherwise it will be removed from the line and rework will happen on this. So at this stage, you can say that the car body in white is painted and it is ready. And now it will move towards the trims and chassis line. So at this stage, the first activity that happens in the trims and chassis line is to remove the doors for easy access. And then it is mounted on the powertrain. So the powertrain will arrive separately from the powertrain line or from the powertrain plant. And it is mounted on this uh, powertrain. This process is called marriage. It could be an IC engine or an electrical vehicle nowadays. 
but this process is still called a marriage and uh, once uh, that happens after the marriage there are a lot of sequence of application uh, processes that happen here so we um, there are more than 100 different operations that have to happen here which involving which involves assembly of all of the different components that you see in the car so there are thousands of components that go into a car right like so different sub assemblies different systems so that have to be completed like for example your brakes your suspension your steering your dashboard your seats boot and all the all the plastics and all the electrical components bulbs etc um, headlamp etc so many different components that have to go into the car they are assembled here some of them robotically some of them manually and all the tools and gauges that, that uh, are required have to reach just in time so just in time means when they are fitting the tire at that location the screwdriver should be there at, at that particular location with the uh, the resource who is the person who is doing that so for the for enabling this there are moving chairs and conveyor belts and parts are assembled with fasteners sealants adhesives etc okay so this is the whole automotive plan, uh, manufacturing cycle and at the end there is qhx also some electrical brakes wheel alignment suspension headlight all of these are checked at this cars are rain tested in rain chambers etc and finally delivered uh, out of the plant so this is the whole overview of uh, automotive manufacturing i hope this was interesting next up we will go into bill of materials and bill of processes so we already discussed about engineering bill of materials what is manufacturing bill of materials so along with e bomb um, uh, engineering bill of materials you also have you have a parallel stuff called manufacturing bill of materials this includes the stuff that that is required apart from the prop parts to manufacture it could be like your sealants or it could be like your uh, your uh, component materials like grease or uh, whatever that is additionally required on top of engineering bill of materials also there could be end items what do i mean by end items like for example if a company like maruti is manufacturing a car would it manufacture this for each and every component in the car, uh, car no it does not like for example you will have your spark plug that goes on the engine they don't manufacture that they purchase it from bosch or any other different company so there are a lot of different fittings that go in the car different uh, different parts that go in the car they, which the company purchases it does not manufacture so that but it it would design also it would design and it would supply to it will ask a supplier to manufacture it for them so that becomes what is called as the end item so a filtered list of the bill of material where the uh, the sub assemblies are not taken care of because it is taken care of by the supplier and uh, any additional object that is required to manufacture is called the manufacturing bill of materials there are also service bill of materials which is required by the service centers to service the product and then there is something called the bill of processes so what is bill of processes it is the list of operations simple so it just means how are you going to do this activity how are you going to fit the tire of the car on the on the wheel how are you going to fit the steering wheel so all of those are operations and each operation can have different activities that go under the operation like okay lift the screw driver walk two steps lift the wheel fix it on the car so these are all different activities that go can go in a single operation called wheel fitment so what are work instructions as i said different activities and different positioning that needs to be done uh, which are parts of an operation are listed down very carefully and uh, animated and images are taken animated images of the uh, of that process are taken and these are called work instructions again to talk about tack time and jobs per hour jph jobs per hour these are uh, these are factors that determine how the process have to be streamlined so that you know the the process happens quickly jobs per hour is simple but like how many hour jobs are you able to do how many cars are you able to produce in an hour tack time is the the to uh, total time available divided by the total demand that you are having for this uh, on that particular uh, day for this uh, for the plant so these are things that you create keep in mind while fine tuning your list of operations and then there is time analysis and there is something called most code uh, most is maynard operation sequence timing why do you do time analysis you do time analysis because you should know exactly like how much time it takes to fit the wheel on that uh, on the axle or like to fit uh, to fit uh, the headlamp how much tire, tire it, uh, time it takes for each and every activity and uh, what is the difference if that activity is done by a uh, by uh, a robot or by a human being or by using a lady resource or a man resource all of these kind of uh, studies are done and uh, the, fi uh, the the whole time is arrived at the whole cycle time is arrived so this is what is a bill of processes
and finally you have bill of resources what are resources resources are anything that help you to manufacture anything that uh, that helps you to manufacture is the resource so there is called something called what resource where resource and who resource what resource is like what do you uh, like for example what do you use to uh, manufacture like for example it can be a weld gun or it can be a screw driver or it can be a spanner so these are these are called what resource what are where resource so simple where are you going to manufacture in in on an assembly line okay on uh, where is this resource going to be available on a conveyor belt or on a um, on a moving vehicle or something like that where where would you get this resource or like where do you plan to do this activity all of those things goes under where resource and then you have who resources who resource simple but uh, is it going to be a robot is it going to be a human is it going to be uh, which kind of uh, which kind uh, human from which citizen what race because everybody's height i weight and their capacity to work is different and documented and their timing is planned so these are the different kind of resources that you have in a automotive company okay now we are going to ppr context ppr context is a product process resources okay it's it's a context in which you are going to link up all these three whatever we discussed till now it is a placeholder for your engineering bill of materials manufacturing bill of materials bill of processes and resources what does it help you to do it helps you to plan establish and create the link between different uh, the digital design whatever dig digital design you are having and the manufacturing data what you are having whatever operations you are planning to manufacture that uh, and uh, and the manufacturing bill of materials that you are having to create the link so that you know which operation is done for what product and where you are doing using what tool so all of that is planned using the ppr context it also helps you to simulate the manufacturability so like for example is it possible to do it at that point at that place using this tool is it possible so we have to simulate and see we have to see the sequence of machining we have to see if the ergonomics or like ergonom by ergonomics i mean whatever activity is planned is it humanly possible can a man reach there reach at the, reach there with his hand is it visible what where he wants to do that activity that particular point is it visible is the hand reachability there these kind of studies are done in the ergonomics of manufacturing and finally it enables you to do the time studies so this whole thing is called the ppr context and finally it helps you to publish all these instructions whatever pl planning and whatever simulation you have done and whatever optimizing of the pr pr process planning that you did it enables you to publish this uh, to the manufacturing plant so now we are going to see how a uh, e bomb ca m bomb can be generated from the e bomb using delmia so what you see on the top is called the e bomb tree structure and now you have a parallel manufacturing bill of material tree structure that you are, that you are going to create so first you have a root node and the red symbol shows that this manufacturing bill of material is going to be linked scope linked directly to this engineering bill of materials so this is going to be the root m bomb for this and now we are going to drag and drop different uh, e bomb elements so you have manufacturing assembly so this is an m bomb object so this is going to be an m bomb object and we are going to drag and drop objects and from e bomb and assign it to the m bomb so the motor is now getting assigned and now the m parallel m bomb for that e bomb is generated so you would see that there is only one node under it and what is the difference between the properties that goes on the m bomb so when you do properties on the m bomb you will see what is the time what is the cost of the of that product what is the lead time that will take lead time is like once you order that particular product like say engine if it if if a car company is buying engine from another company how much time it will take for that company to uh, to deliver it so all of those things goes under the e bomb prop m bomb properties also you would see something called um is end item declaration or like is it an outsourced product or it's an in house product are we manufacturing it or are we buying it these kind of decisions are also done there so if you see on a provide you uh, that is uh, on an m bomb node you will see the all these properties being defined what is the material and uh, so on and so forth like uh, from what date it was uh, in in production and from what was the parent production and so on so what is the release date so you can set all of these properties under it basically m bomb declaration means that which product you are going to buy which product you are going to manufacture when you can get it what is the cost involved what is the time involved these are factors that manifest that go into the m bomb these processes can parallelly be done also in the 
um, in the ERP and MES system also. Okay, so you see that there is an uh, attribute here called outsourced. So the see outsourced yes and planning required no. What does that mean? It means that it, you you don't need to plan for the manufacture of this because we are going to buy it or we are going to outsource it to a different company. So these are all different attributes that are available on M. Now we are moving moving to process planning. So once you have the manufacturing bill of materials, we can do the process plan. So, what, so I'm going to describe how a process plan structure is created. So within the PPR context, you have the engineering bill of materials and you have the manufacturing bill of materials. Now we are going to de define the process uh, tree where you will see that the assembly plant is planned now. Let's say you are going to manufacture it in one particular plant. This plant can be like in Chennai or in uh, in Gurgaon or wherever. So where is the plant? So that, that that plant's name you will define. And inside that plant, you will have different uh, things. Like, for example, you will have a building inside the plant or you will have an assembly line inside the plant. So if you have a different line buildings to be defined, you can define buildings also. Inside that, you're defining different assembly lines. And in the assembly line, you could have multiple assembly lines and in the assembly lines, you are going to define stations. Stations is where some activity is actually done. So whatever the manufacturing activity is done. So you, you can define different stations inside the plant. So again, so this is a process of defining different stations. So obviously one assembly line will have multiple stations and um, maybe like multiple stations, uh, which will be where there'll be a product flow. So the output of one station will go as input to the next station. We are creating multiple stations here. And now at this stage, we are going through the process called scoping. So we will say that this particular M-bomb, this whatever M-bomb was created here, we are going to manufacture in this plant. So we, we, what we do is called creating a scope. So once we scope it, we say that this entire M bomb we have allocated to this particular plant. So you will see a blue circle. It indicates that a scope is created. So it says scope creation successful between plant and M bomb. Once the entire node is entire thing is allocated, you can drag and drop or you have using this tool called assignment manager. What you can do is you can assign different M bomb to different stations. As you see, so the one particular M bomb was assigned to station one. The next M bomb I am assigning to station two. And the th uh, and uh, say equipment I assign to station two, chassis I assign to station three. So once you have this assignments done, you see multiple levels of assignment, multiple products are assigned to multiple stations. But that is not enough. You need to define what is called as the product flow. So from which station, what material goes to the next station? This is go go this has to be defined. You have something called the product flow. So you say station one's product will go as input to station two. Uh, station two's output will go as input to station three and so on. So I'm I, whatever I'm trying to show is very simplistic. So at this stage, you see station three's output image has totally changed. It is an assembly of all the parts that we have got till now. So, right. So this is how we move forward. So station one to station two to station three. Once we have defined the product flow, we know, okay, at the end of the assembly line, the whole assembly line, this is the output. So what you see in the actual colors, the bold colors is the output of that. And the translucent color, the transparent translucent uh, part is a whole car. So from so when you click the plant, you see what is already up planned for whatever is thick, whatever is the opaque colors that you see is the, the part that you have already planned for the translucent are remaining and you have planned the plant, uh, uh, the, the particular assembly line. So this, this entire process is called as process planning. From here on, so we have come to the end of this discussion about uh, about the introduction to process planning. From here on, what else is the possibility? The possibilities are endless. You have a lot of different roles and different apps to explore there in that compass. As you saw in the first, in, in the initial slide itself, there are a lot of different options available inside that. And you could do simulations, simulations to see if the assembly actually can happen smoothly. If something will collide, will, uh, will two parts sit together? Or like say the resource, the screwdriver, will it reach that particular screw? Uh, can, the, can the human being uh, actually uh, place it? So for that, you have what is called as a mannequin simulation. So where you can actually place a human being here and try to see if his hand is reaching there, his screwdriver is reaching there or not. Those kind of simulations you can do. 
you could do a, a clash and contact simulations so that in the automotive industry there are different standards saying that no you cannot place uh, something very close to each other like say 5 mm distance has to be maintained between two particular parts so those kind of things you can analyze you can learn about different stuff like uh, how to create product flows how to streamline the, your product flow how to create your pro uh, then you will uh, you can see what is called as a gantt chart what is a gantt chart gantt chart is uh, it helps you to see what is the time taken for each operation under each station and how that you know, each operation can be defined each activity can be defined what is the time taken for each of them what is the most code for each each of them that level of detailed uh, planning can be done what i have shown you is a very very macro overview there is a lot of things that you can uh, learn in if you go in depth to it there is like workload balancing i like uh, so that Uh, maybe like the resource is not too much stressed also so that you can have multiple resources and uh, what is the usage of each by uh, each premise each uh, assembly line and so on L there are a lot of lot of planning options inside this and this is uh, this is just an introduction to a process planning as such so we are just trying to do it with a toy right now but in the actual real case there are, uh, there is so much more complexity involved so i i hope this was a good learning experience for you and good uh, good knowledge uh, that you would have uh, gained and some some uh, you know how digitally things are done that it would have uh, you would have got some enlightenment on that so just going to uh, give you an overview on what are the different job profiles in the industry in the automotive world in the aerospace world for this so there are obviously a, a huge demand for design engineers design engineers are people who def design the cad using the uh, geometrical constraints what are given to them from the the vehicle architecture from the architecture team and the styling team so there are a lot of uh, openings on design engineers for lot of uh, auto uh, companies in different departments so definitely katia is a big skill set for design engineers uh, parallel software are also called nx nx from siemens is also a parallel software which uh, will uh, if you have knowledge it is good there is again uh, process planning that we discussed till now tell me so you have uh, openings for process planners in all the automotive and aerospace oems uh, all the automotive oems definitely they will have not only oems even tier 2 suppliers with uh, complex manufacturing practices uh, like bosch or like uh, micro uh, and a um, lot of uh, tier 2 uh, suppliers they will also have openings simulation engineers to simulate and see what is the stress strain heat simulations what are the assembly conditions clearance checks so on this is a big uh, activity that happens uh, and most of them and these are these activities mind you are also happening in services companies like infosys and tcs and tata tech tech mahindra etc because uh, they um, they take up a lot of uh, these activities outsourced from uh, the whole world and uh, they try to do it as off, off, offshore in india so there are a lot of openings for all these uh, majorly all these three you will see a lot of opening that is happening industrial plant layout designers little less uh, than compared to all the other three because plant layout is not something that you would design daily it is uh, something uh, product design is something that you do daily plant layout is a little less plus it is a little bit oriented towards it's somewhere between civil as well as mechanical engineering so you will see uh, those kind of openings also there is always a de demand for machining engineers people who can write cnc code and simulate that uh, because again 3d experience allows you to write cnc code or like even if you can't write C even if not not only writing cnc code to simulate the cnc and generate the cnc code stuff like that so there are openings uh, there are a lot of profiles on those uh, domains as well and then uh, if you uh, get into uh, the world of uh, manufacturing ex execution and if you are a person who wants to really work on the plant and see it live there are, if you know mes and if you know uh, erp systems uh, you can get up op uh, openings in uh, in the manufacturing plant also so there are the, this uh, learning virtual manufacturing is really going to add value to all kind of engineering background people uh, uh, so it, it, it's it's a win, a win win situation so definitely choose your niche and uh, learn uh, some some uh, get, get on to some part of virtual manufacturing is what i would have to say so i hope it was a informative session for all of you and i look uh, forward for your feedback thank you